everyone. Welcome to Mornings at the Allotment and um, welcome to my kitchen. As I mentioned in my last video, I'm going to be cooking um, a Thanksgiving dinner today. I grew up in the United States and so of course my family um, celebrate Thanksgiving. But since I'm in Germany, um, it's just a regular work day and we had our company Christmas dinner, end of year dinner. Um, so we didn't get to celebrate Thanksgiving. Now, this weekend my daughter's in her dad's place, but she is coming home tonight. So I decided I'd use today to cook basically a side dish dinner, Thanksgiving dinner, without the turkey. Um, because I wanted to see how much I could actually put on the table that comes from our garden. Now there's a couple of things that we don't grow, but that I still have to have for a Thanksgiving dinner. Um, like cream cheese corn and we didn't grow any corn this year or cranberry sauce we don't have cranberries um, so uh, I had to go out and buy those but much of what I'm doing is from our plot and I'm going to talk you through some of them some of them I'm just going to do and put music to it um, we'll see how this goes how much of it actually ends up in the final video because I don't I can't do a 10 hour video in the end um, but yeah, it's just past 9 a.m. and um, I'm just waiting for the dishwasher to finish um, because I have the bowl for my um, KitchenAid in there <laughs> and I wanted to start with the um, pie crust. Um, there's going to be a pecan pie. Oh yeah, uh, we don't grow those in our garden either. Um, I may do a second pie depending on my timeline um, and take um, leftovers to work tomorrow. Um, yeah, we'll just see how it goes. I'll take you along with me. Um, all right, I'm going to be starting uh, with a rather freestyle cranberry sauce. I got these cranberries um, on sale, 50% off. I have no idea why they're in perfect shape. Um, so I bought um, two packs. And it's a bit much, but I'm just going to be um, canning the rest, putting it in the fridge for Christmas. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm going to run the canner for two jars of cranberry sauce. Um, so what I've got here, let me just, what I've got here is an onion from the pot. We hang them in the shed or in front of the shed, depending on the time of year. Um, but it's not ideal storage, so basically what I try to do is I use them up as fast as possible. And then since we don't have enough, um, I'm just going to then buy, buy locally grown onions once these are finished. Um, we don't like our cranberry sauce too sweet, so um, I'm going to be uh, putting in an onion and not sure what type of citrus. Um, I was thinking I was thinking of putting in an orange, I usually do, but I also picked some um, sorrel in the garden yesterday um, for the citrus taste because that's something unlike uh, oranges or lemons that's something we can grow so I picked that up in the garden yesterday and I think I'm going to put that in and then depending on the taste I'm going to decide whether I need some more orange juice or something similar um, yeah, I'm just gonna slice these not too fine not really necessary and saute them in a bit of butter um, now I'm not making any turkey today and most of the recipes are going to be vegetarian I'm thinking they could do most of them vegan as well as well um, but I'm going to be using um, dairy products 
uh, because we're we are neither a vegetarian nor vegan. We are neither vegetarian nor we vegan, but I do like um, to cook um, vegetable-based meals. Yeah, so I'm just gonna saute that in some butter. You can never have too much butter, but you can take some um, vegan alternative to that as well. Since I want this to keep, I will be adding quite a bit of sugar. Um, so I'm thinking probably about 75 grams. Sorry to anyone who doesn't do grams, but um, I'll try to remember to measure out the amounts. But it, it's a free, it's freestyle. It's not a particular recipe, so. That would be, oh, I don't know. Uh, about four fluid ounces in there. You know what? I am going to put this in after all. Let me just peel that while the onions saute. And I'll get back to you in a minute. All right, um, I've sauteed the onions and I'm just going to add the cranberries as they are and about a cup of water. And I'm going to slowly simmer them until they pop. And I'm also going to be adding in um, the mandarin oranges or it's one mandarin orange. I've left the skins on. I didn't uh, squeeze out the juice. I just, I'm just putting in the whole, whole thing because it is going to cook down. So, yeah. Basically, um, you, you just cook them until they pop. I'm going to be adding the sugar um, once they've softened. All right, um, now for the um, pie crust, I have a recipe that I've uh, been using for a couple of years, but to be honest, I don't make it the way you're supposed to. I just dump everything in and let the machine do it. I don't like dough on my fingers. Um, so check out a recipe and do it that way. Don't do what I do. And um, this makes two crusts, so either top, bottom, or just two bottoms. And um, I did it the first time in cups and then um, transferred it to uh, grams because that's how we work in Germany. So I can tell you both, it's um, two and a half cups or 315 grams of flour. And you may need more, so just keep it on hand. teaspoons of granulated sugar. In this case, I'm, I'm using white sugar. And so it wasn't dry. One teaspoon of salt. The, the spoons are all leveled. Um, and then one cup or 230 grams of unsalted butter, chilled and cubed. Now that's, this is 250 grams, so it's, um, yeah, almost the whole packet. Um, and um, this is actually um, cultured butter. I know in the United States you don't usually um, get that, or it's more expensive. Here it's standard. Of course, I'm not going to cube it, you know, I'm, I'm all for saving time. I'm really a, a, a lazy cook and a lazy baker. Um, yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll let the machine incorporate everything that's in there now. And then I'm going to add, this is the only thing 
um, that's going to be going in there afterwards. Um, it's um, 120 milliliters or half a cup of ice water. Basically, I put in um, some water and then added ice cubes to it. And that's an approximation. You just add it tablespoon by tablespoon and see how much you need to get the crust, the dough, um, the way you need it. Um, yeah, so this makes two. I'm not, I'm just going to do um, bottom crusts. Um, so we'll see what I do with the second half. I may make a plum pie, plum tart with it and take leftovers to work tomorrow or I may freeze it. It freezes pretty well and use it on Christmas or any day in between. And because everything tends to stick to the side with butter, I'm going to be using this attachment here with the lip. Okay, this is gonna be loud, so I'll just leave you and get back to you later. All right, um, this is crumbly now, almost holding together already, even without uh, the water. So I'm going to be adding this tablespoon-wise. Um, up to 120 milliliters. I think anywhere from 100 to 150 may work. You don't want sticky dough. You want it to just barely hold together. And to tell you the truth, this was just about 50 milliliters now. I've never needed this little water, but it's definitely holding together. So well, in fact, that I'm almost tempted to add flour to it. Um, let me just get it out and show you. Yeah, it's definitely holding together. Almost, almost too sticky. Um, so I'm just going to be um, forming this into, uh, in this case, not a ball, because I need to put it in a container, and this is the size of the container. And going to chill it and since our fridge is notoriously since our fridge is notoriously over full I love that there's it's three degrees outside so just above freezing and I can chill this outside okay so that's the pie crust done for now and I'm going to return to the cranberry sauce. I think uh, that's basically ready um, to show you. Yeah, the cranberry sauce has been simmering. What was it for the pie crust? Took me about five minutes, five to 10 minutes. I added the sugar and the um, sorrel, and I'm just going to let it simmer a bit longer and then take it off the heat and also store it on the balcony and then just reheat it um, later for jarring um, canning leftovers. All right, this next recipe is very dear to my heart. Um, I harvested sweet potatoes at the plot yesterday. You may have seen that in my video and added a sweet potato um, from uh, the farmer's market, a small one. Um, and I'm going to be making, um, well, originally it's brandied um, sweet potatoes. In our case, I'm using sherry. And this recipe uh, I first tasted at a Thanksgiving celebration at Liana's place. Liana is a very, very dear friend who unfortunately passed away much too early a while back. Um, but every Thanksgiving I make this and I'm, you can make it in the oven. It takes about an hour in the oven, but since I need the oven for other things, I'm going to be putting it in the crock pot slow cooker. So I have the sweet potatoes here, but I'm going to be making the sauce first and um, I need to eat that. What I do need, this is half the recipe, is about a teaspoon of butter. And um, um, about 
what's in the recipe, one third of a cup or 80 mils of um, sugar, brown sugar. So low heat, you don't want this burning. And um, a quarter uh, cup of water. Optionally, you can also add orange juice, which is what Liana did. We don't like it as sweet. We think they're sweet enough. And also there's a lot of sugar in there. And then um, 30 mil or an eighth of a cup of, well, brandy, cognac, sherry, port, whatever you want to use. Or of course you can leave it out if you don't want alcohol in there. So I'm just going to bring this to a boil, melt the sugar, then add the sherry to it, and then I'm going to toss it all in the crock pot. Let me just bring the crock pot over. I really like using this for big meals for some of the sides um, because it doesn't use up oven space. So six to eight hours on low in the crock pot or three to four hours on high in the crock pot or one hour in the oven. Let me just see whether you have that. Yeah, perfect. Whether you have that in the picture. So I'm just going to heat this until it simmers, add the sherry and then toss it all in here. You can add raisins. Traditionally, many families add um, marshmallows. I don't do that. If you do want to add marshmallows, you add them toward the end. You just want them melting. You don't want them burning. So while I heat this, let me just check on the cranberries. Yeah. This is beginning to thicken up. So I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to let it cool side on the balcony in a minute and I'm going to turn off this as well. Um, I could simmer this to get rid of the alcohol now, um, but in my experience even on low in the crock pot um, you do get rid of the alcohol plus we don't really mind having any leftover in there and Hannah isn't going to be eating any of this anyway. Okay, so I'm just gonna pour it into the crock pot over the sweet potatoes. Now normally I would have made a bigger batch but um, we love to cook and if we have too many leftovers we don't get to cook as often so we try to um, not get too many leftovers. Um, so the Sweet potatoes just filling the bottom now, and that's fine. Um, I'm just going to toss it um, every couple of hours. Uh, the lid. So that's done. This is going on the balcony, and I'll see you again in a bit. One dish that goes in the oven, but that I can prepare ahead of time, easily prepare ahead of time, is cream cheese corn. And as I said, we didn't grow any corn in the garden this year, so I got a jar of organic corn. And we prefer jars because we can reuse them. Um, we don't like cans. So uh, basically it's just a jar of corn. Add approximately the same amount of cream cheese. In this case, it's homemade cream cheese from um, homemade yogurt. So I make, I make um, yogurt from milk that I get from milk that I get close by, um, raw milk, um, pasteurize it, make yogurt and um, then from the leftover yogurt from the week before I drain it to make cream cheese. And one thing I forgot to prepare is parsley. I picked that in the garden yesterday and washed it, but forgot to chop it, so I'm just going to um, tear it up 
and put it in there. Hardy's going to laugh when he sees this because I keep complaining when he puts parsley on everything. In this dish though, um, it's to me it's a must. You can leave it out. And you saw I put in a bit of salt. Um, don't need too much of the salt. But I don't salt my cream cheese, so. I did add just a bit, probably about half a teaspoon. I'm just going to toss this. Um, mix it up well, put it in a casserole dish and put it outside or in the fridge uh, until I need to heat it and then it goes in the oven for about 20 minutes. That's why I'm using square casseroles because um, I can put several of those next to each other in the oven. It's going to be a bit difficult. Normally I, I can use my neighbor's oven but um, they don't have a kitchen at the moment, so they've been using ours. Hence the um, sweet potatoes in the crock pot. I do like them better in the oven, but um, yeah. So that's done as well, and that's going out on the balcony. All right, um, I'm now going to be making the pecan pie um, filling and I have the recipe here because I make this so rarely um, so we're going to start just a second we're going to start in the mixer um, with uh, let me see where did I put it here half a teaspoon of salt half a teaspoon of cinnamon so this is for one pie half a teaspoon of cinnamon, um, a cup of sugar, now it says two-thirds of a cup um, soft brown sugar and one-third of a cup white or brown uh, granular sugar. I did about half-half um, because I didn't have enough of the soft brown sugar. Um, so in total uh, one cup or 240 mils. Um, then, um, let me see, 180 mils of maple syrup. To let this drip out. And two tablespoons of um, whiskey. Now, unfortunately, we don't do cheap whiskeys in this house, so I'm going to have to use the expensive one. Hardy saw it and thought I was going to be drinking it. No, I'm not. It's it goes in the pie, and it didn't bother Hannah last year. It um, there's no alcohol left after baking, anyways, and she didn't mind the taste. So um, yeah, even though peated whiskeys are um, very strong, um, and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And then I'll start um, adding four eggs, one after the other, and uh, beat those in. All right. Uh, okay, now over to the oven, or to the stove, actually. Okay, and now to thicken the whole mixture, um, because I'm not using corn syrup in this recipe, um, I'm going to be melting about four tablespoons of butter and making a kind of roux with uh, four tablespoons of butter and um, two teaspoons of flour and that's going to go in the mixture to thicken up thicken it up a bit Now we have Hardy behind the camera so you get a few different shots. I just realized um, that for my cream cheese corn and my um, sweet potatoes, um, 
my head is like in the top right corner of the picture, which is really, yeah, not very usable. So it's always good to have someone behind the camera. So this is going to be fun. I absolutely detest um, rolling out pie crusts. It never works out the way it should. So, ah, the recipe, yeah. So I'm just going to push it flat with my hands a bit and then uh, roll it out. And I really, I hate doing it. This one looks like it'll work out more or less. Um, and I think Hadi's probably having a fun time behind the camera because he doesn't have to do it. Um, but this recipe is actually one that so far has worked out pretty well. It doesn't tear as easily. Um, but to tell you the truth, I've given up on perfect pies. Um, you can always piece it together again if it tears. Well, I just need to make it bigger than the bigger than the dish, and then I can cut off all the excess and piece it together in, well, that looks like it'll be enough. Because in the end, no one is going to see whether it's perfect or pieced together. See? This doesn't have to be pre-baked, but I add just a bit of, oh, I have enough flour here, just a bit of flour to the bottom. All right, so we have um, 250 grams of pecans that I'm just going to spread out. Yes, you could theoretically spread them out nicely, evenly, you know, in some kind of pattern. I won't. And then I'm just going to add the syrup to the top. It's a kind of diet pie. Oh yeah, definitely a diet. It's a pie, once you've eaten it, you have to go on a diet. <laughs> yeah, just... As you can see, the pecans are swimming around in there, so I'm just pushing them back evenly again. Okay. And, um, yeah, just going to fold this in a bit. Uh, gently, and then I'm going to fold it over as well, but I'm going to do that in two steps. So I'm just going, rolling in the edges. I don't go overboard with making pies pretty, they need to taste good. Of course you can decorate it as much as you want. I tend not to. The main reason I'm rolling it in is because I want it to be thick so it doesn't... Um, so it doesn't... the edges don't burn. Okay, the oven is... Uh, supposed to be preheating to 200 degrees Celsius, which is uh, 400 Fahrenheit. I forgot to do that, so now the pie will be sitting here for a bit. 
and then I'll bake it for 10 minutes at that temperature and then lower it to, um, what does it say, 175 Celsius or 350 Fahrenheit and bake it for another 45 minutes to an hour and you'll see when it's done. Um, it'll still be... Um, <laughs> no, he's tying the, tr the crust. Um, it'll still be soft in the middle, it'll still move just a bit. Um, yeah, and then let it cool for four hours, which is why I'm baking it and now. It's 11.15 at the moment. Yeah, so I'm preheating the oven and then that'll go in and I'll show you when it's done. And because it was such a load of fun rolling out that pie crust and because our freezer is full so I can't freeze the rest, I've decided to make a second pie. I'm sure my colleagues at work will be thankful for it, for all the leftovers. Um, the second one, so it's the other half of the pie crust. And the second one will be filled with um, Mirabelle plums. I'm not sure they were either foraged or from my sister's garden. Um, I did both this year. I think these are from my sister's garden. And I um, canned them. They're pre-sweetened and pre-spiced. So basically all I have to do is um, roll out the crust and fill it with the prepared filling. And as I said, I need, I really, I want to eat pecan pie and I'm sure I won't be able to taste both today, but um, my colleagues are, there are quite a few of them with a sweet tooth, so I'm fairly certain that the pie will be eaten. I'm really a fan of this pie crust. Um, we don't get shortening easily in Germany, so... And I didn't want to use lard because I'm not sure how Hannah would feel about that. So, again, no pre-baking. I'm just going to be putting some flour on there. It will be, it will um, sit a while, but I'll prepare it and just put it outside until it's ready to bake. Okay. See, um, I can it in veg jars. You heard that pop. It's definitely well canned. And I'm going to spoon them out. Mmm, um, this smells good. Just spoon them out um, onto the crust. Um, and I may leave the syrup in the jar because um, without pre-baking, I don't want to risk too much liquid. Um, making the pie crust soggy. That's an 850 ml jar, I think. Uh, so almost, what is that, a quart? Or a liter? Um, and that's just the right amount uh, for a pie like this. Okay, in this case, um, let me just use up the rest of the crust. Okay, the pecan pie is going in the oven, starting with 10 minutes, and for this one, let me see, I'm looking for my cookie cutters, here they are. just been using these for Christmas cookies, so I had them on hand. 
I don't know if you can even see, just going to fold it down just a bit to form a slight edge. Now, if Hannah were here baking this cake um, or this pie, she would be making all kinds of designs. Just a quick shot of the pecan pie that has just come out of the oven. Um, I'm going to let it cool a bit here and then, as everything else, put it out on the balcony. And the Mirabelle plum pie is in the oven now. All right, one more recipe from the plot. Green beans, canned. They're called Blauhilde. And I'm just gonna start, start this and then reheat it quickly um, later on. What I've done, just see. I'm just going to pour it all in, including the liquid. And these are just um, pressure pressure canned. Careful, these are beans. They're pressure canned um, with um, water and a bit of salt. And I'm going to add some, what are they called? Steinpilze. Not porcini mushrooms, I think, uh, that we um, forged. I'm not sure what they're called in English. I'm going to put it um, below. Um, since we're doing this without meat normally, I would be putting bacon in here. Um, but um, for the umami taste, I add the mushrooms. And in addition, I'm going to be adding, let me see, um, about half a teaspoon of salt, approximately the same amount of pepper. Or a bit more, we love pepper. And some onion powder. <laughs> These were um, red onions from the plot that I um, dehydrated and then grated. And about one teaspoon of onion powder. And basically I'm just going to heat this, then uh, let it sit for a while and then just quickly reheat it when we're ready to eat. So yeah, no need for bacon to get that smoky flavor. Yeah, so as I said, this was pressure canned at high pressure, very high pressure. Um, please don't just water bath canned beans. You don't want to risk your own health or that of anyone else you're feeding. These may be a bit stringy, unfortunately, but can't help it. Um, I harvest the, them too late, but I really didn't want them to go to waste, so I canned them after all. So I'm just going to let this come up to a simmer and uh, then get on with something else. All right, now for the pièce de résistance, uh, stuffed, what is it? It's a red curry uh, pumpkin. And um, this is from the garden. It's been cured and so it would last us for quite a while, but I really wanted this for today's meal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off the top and then I'm going to take out um, all the seeds and it will be filled with our regular bread stuffing that normally we would be putting in a bird 
or sometimes we just put it in a, in a dish and put it directly in the oven. In this case though, um, let me just take off some of the stem here. Okay, this is the hardest part because it's really not that easy to cut into. So if you hear me grunt, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get it parallel to the bottom, but yeah, okay. Well, I did get the lid off, but this isn't going to be easy because I didn't cut far enough into it. So I can't just scoop out the seeds. I'm going to have to cut into it actually with the knife. This doesn't have to be pretty. I'm not going to do anything. I'm uh, not going to do anything with the seeds now, but I am going to keep them. So I'm just gonna put them here in a sieve and um, deal with those later. I'm not going to be saving them because we had two types of quarry squash in the garden this year next to each other. So they are likely to have cross pollinated, but I still have enough um, seeds left for next year. So um, we're going to be eating these. They're not that great uh, as far as pumpkin seeds go for eating, but they're fine. They're okay. Um, so for this next bit, as I make the um, stuffing, Hardy will be joining me. We promised the viewers of his channel, his cooking channel, that we'd go live, live on Facebook for them. So we'll be doing that while I film for you. So there may be a bit of German-English mishmash. I'm going to try to explain in English for my video what I'm doing and then in between um, I'm going to comment to them in German. So we'll see how that works out. So this is prepped. All the ingredients are prepped as well. And these are going outside. And um, I'll see you again in a bit. All right, as promised, uh, the pièce de résistance uh, stuffed pumpkin. And um, I'm going to be making it with the same stuffing that I would normally be putting in a turkey. And um, what I need is um, breadcrumbs. All of this is from home baked bread, that's why we have some bigger crumbs, some smaller crumbs. I added a couple of mushrooms in there for umami flavor. Um, since we're doing this without any bacon or anything of the kind. Then I have some, that's two chopped onions from the garden, um, some chopped garlic also from the garden, and um, sage, thyme, and um, um, celery leaf, leaf celery, no. And some um, nutmeg and some cloves, all powdered, some white wine and some homemade broth. And you can use any type of broth for this. This is very condensed. So I'm going to be adding some uh, water uh, as well. We do need that because we don't have um, any of the, if you look at a stuffing and um, that usually goes in a bird and you want to make it in a pie dish or something, you have to add extra liquid because it won't get the uh, liquids um, that it would get if it was stuffed into an animal. Okay. Herzlich willkommen bei Moment. Sind wir live?
Ja, herzlich willkommen bei Koch mit Hardy. Wir machen hier ein bilinguales Video. All right, everyone. Um, the scenes in between were taken from uh, the Facebook Live I did on my partner's channel, on his cooking channel. And um, What's your name, please. It's called Koch mit Hardy. Here he is. So if you speak German, you can check that out as well. And um, so I have the uh, red curry filled with half of the stuffing, and the other half is just in the same casserole dish with it. And we're not putting it, it in the oven quite yet. It's uh, 4.30. Hannah is coming home at about 5, but we don't want to eat before 6. So I think I'm going to put it in the oven in about an hour. And then reheat everything else. And then I'll give you another glimpse of what our Thanksgiving table actually looks like. So you have enough time to clean up. There's not much to clean up. A messy kitchen here. <laughs> All right, um, I'm going to, I'm not even going to bother preheating the oven. I'm going to set the oven to 180 Celsius and I'm going to put the pumpkin in there. And set the time. Let me turn it this way because it's warmer in the back than it. Oh, let me just put you down. This is too high. The stem is too high, so I'm just going to put it here. And I'm putting the pumpkin in the back because it's warmer in the back. And um, then uh, I'm setting the, the timer to about 20 minutes and then I'm going to put the um, cream cheese corn in there in about 20 minutes. The uh, stuffed 
pumpkin, red curry, cranberry sauce. This is non-traditional. It's just um, a bread that Hardy baked yesterday. Cream cheese corn. Green beans, Blauhilde. And sweet potatoes. The sweet potatoes are from the garden, as are the um, beans and the porcini that are in there were foraged. The yogurt and cream cheese were homemade, but not the mm, corn wasn't grown in our garden. Then the cranberries were bought in because we didn't have any. The pumpkin, of course, is from our garden, as are all the herbs that are in the bread stuffing. <laughs> all right. Thank you for watching this video. I know it was different. I know it was kind of erratic um, because we filmed with different cameras and at different times of day. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you'll be back for our next video and I hope to see you again here very soon. Bye.